Hey guys, welcome back to the BFS Fishing Channel, and in this video, we're going to be tearing down this reel, the Shimano Corrado BFS, which is also pretty much the Shimano SLX BFS and also the Shimano Scorpion BFS. Uh, in this video, we're going to be going over where you can actually swap out the bushings on this reel to make it closer to a 10 plus 1 or potentially an 11 plus 1 ball bearing reel. And so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the handle knobs on this reel. And I wanna show you basically what size the bushings are in the handle knobs. And so we can go ahead, ooh, lots of grease, wonderful. Okay, so to take these out, basically all you need to do is there are two little holes, if you can see there, so you've got one hole or opening here and then one opening there. And so when this is seated into the handle knob, you take one of these wonderful handy dandy handle knob end cap pullers, insert, and then just give it a good pull and then it pops out. All right, so we're gonna set that aside. And if you can see, which I don't think you can, but there is a good amount of grease in there. So go ahead and take a Q-tip and try to get as much of that out as possible before you go ahead and try to open this up because it'll just be really messy. So what's inside is a Phillips head screw. I'm using a J0 Phillips bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and take out the handle knob once the screw comes out. So what should come out in the bottom, we're gonna use our handle knob puller. Here's a bearing and it's got a fair amount of grease on it. No surprise. That is actually probably one of the reasons as to why this handle or both of these handles do not want to turn. Now I will say that the handle knobs are shimmed quite well, if at all, uh, and that most likely over time, the handle knobs will start to spin on their own as the uh, the grease kind of kind of melts. Um, but I'm gonna for now, I don't see any shims on there, so that's really really good machining on uh, Shimano's part. And then we're gonna take a look at. Okay, so the screw came out, so that is right here. And then I wanna take a look at this bushing. So here's the bushing and the shim comes out underneath that. So we wanna save the shim for sure. I guess there's no way around getting my hands all greasy on this teardown, huh? All right, let's go ahead and wipe this off and then get a measurement. It does look to be the same size, or at least very similar to that bearing. So, and I'll give you guys a size on the, uh, the bearing as well. Actually, the bearing is a little bit taller. Looks like, in any case, let's get actual sizes on that. So we will start with, excuse me, and zero this out. We'll go ahead and get an inner diameter first. Coming in at about four, we'll get an outer diameter, which comes in at about seven, and then we'll get a width, which is gonna come in at about two and a half. Let's see. One more time, so 2.5 width, and then outer diameter is gonna be seven, and then inner diameter is going to be four. So a four by seven by 2.5. And I'm assuming that the bearing is gonna be the same, but we're gonna go ahead and get measurements on this as well. So yeah, that's gonna be about a four. Outer diameter is going to be a seven. And then the width of the bearing is going to come in at 2.5 exactly. So these are the same size, four by seven by 2.5. So actually that's really great because that's a pretty standard uh, size ball bearing. 
And the way you reassemble is to go ahead and put your ball bearing on first. Then we're going to go ahead and take our handle knob. We want our shim and we want our bushing. And the shim should go first into the handle knob itself. Oops. And you can go ahead and try to seat your bushing down in the bottom. Or you can go ahead and come out again. I'm gonna try to do this on camera so you guys can see. I'm just using my end cap puller. All right, so then we'll go ahead and seat the handle knob. And you can see that there is still quite a bit of crease coming out. I'm not really sure why Shimano greased this so heavily, but the bushing does need to seat around the shaft of the, the handle knob and it's not very... So I'm doing this live uh, in a one take and there we go. All right, so that is not easy. Uh, I don't really like that design. <laughs> All right, then go ahead and put your screw back in and then getting this aligned and then to, dr to drop into where it's supposed to go. It's never very easy on these. Miraculously, I was able to just get it done. Hopefully it'll stay. All right. Okay, bottomed out. And yeah, I definitely, if I were to keep this real, I would be cleaning out all of that grease. I would be replacing that bushing with a bearing. And uh, yeah, I'd be probably using um, a lighter oil to, uh, to lubricate these two bearings. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start the teardown of the reel. So right off the bat, we know now that we can upgrade two of those bushings with a very easy to find size of bearing. And then to go ahead and remove your retaining cap, and then we are going to take off this nut and this is a left hand. So I need to go lefty loosey, I'm sorry, righty loosey, lefty tidy. All right, handle knob should come off, or handle should come off. We'll go ahead and set that aside up here. Here is our drag star. And this does look to be made out of aluminum, which is very nice. We've got a nice spring here. We can just go ahead and take that out and there's no directionality to that. And then I like to put my thumb on the spool while I try to remove this nut. And again, it's righty loosey. And again, we're gonna have, similar to the Aldebaran, we're going to have a copper washer, which does appear to be sided. So the darker side is gonna go towards this nut and then the lighter side is going to go towards the reel. I'm going to keep those together so I don't have to mess with them later. Then we've got two spring washers. And so again, these are the types that are kind of semi-circle and uh, they need to kind of oppose each other. All right, I'm going to set those aside. They are keyed as well. So just a word of warning, when you put these back, don't have it so that the orientation of the curve is actually the same on both of these. You want them to be different. You want it to look like, kind of like this. I don't know if you guys can see that at all, but uh, yeah, they're not, they're not gonna be like, kind of curving with each other essentially. Okay, so with that being done, you can take a look at underneath the spool tension knob 
and does look like there is a small retaining clip which can be removed with a pair of tweezers and then it looks like there may be a spacer of some sort in here go ahead and screw this back on okay now we can get into the side plate click open tilt down and then remove i'm not going to mess with the ftb system on this it's um it's a pretty straightforward design. It does have some adjustability. You can remove one of the magnets, the one that says N. I'm not really sure why you'd want to remove magnets. If anything, I'd probably want to add magnets. If I were keeping this, I'd probably look for a way to free up this uh, brake adjust dial because it is, it is extremely hard to move. I think it frees up a little bit after you start using it, but that, I don't think that that should be that hard to, I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really trying to use my fingernail to kind of get some purchase on uh, this little tiny dial right there. I, I'm not a fan of that, but um, yeah, maybe there are upgrades where you can actually change out this uh, brake dial adjust. I'm not going to mess with that today though. We're just going to get into the tear down of the reel. Okay, so here's the spool. There is no spool bearing on this. The, uh, the support is actually behind the pinion on the interior of the reel. I'm not 100% sure why they didn't just go ahead and put a bearing behind the uh, where the pinion kind of engages the spool itself. Very curious to me why they did not do that, but I guess they were trying to save some weight potentially. Yeah, not sure. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can't get into this reel. It, I only see the one screw there. Okay, so one, two, three, four. We're gonna go ahead and try to open this up. This is the first time that I'm opening up this reel, so you know, if I mess up, then I mess up. The, they all appear to be Phillips. Look a little bit closer. You can potentially use a a flat head and so I may actually do that instead let's see here so that's a little bit too big and the flat head size that I'm going to be using is a 2.5 and that should work yep so a 2.5 flat head you could probably get away with like a three millimeter uh, I may actually size up to do that just so that um, it'll be a little bit more, I'll have a little bit more of my flat head engaging the screw. All right, so one is out. Let's go ahead and do it to the second one. A two may not work, or a three may not work. I may need to go back to the 2.5. So hold on. I think that this flat head is probably not a good candidate for this. So if ever you get to the point where you feel like you're stripping a screw or you're about to slip your screwdriver bit, it kind of will benefit you to stop right there and then take a minute to figure out what bit might be the better bit to use. And so I was using a flathead, but I'm going back now and trying a Phillips on this one. Okay, so these are in there really, really tight. So you do have to use a little bit of pressure and uh, just kind of go slow. Um, if you feel it slip, then just stop immediately because you will strip your screw. And uh, you don't want to do that if possible. So eventually I 
I'm using a 2.5 Phillips bit for these screws. And that seems to work quite well. Um, I'm actually gonna be upgrading or investing in a better set of screwdrivers. I think it's been quite a while since uh, since I've started doing these teardowns and I'm still using this uh, this Amazon set. It kind of goes to show that you can get away with, uh, you, you, know, you don't absolutely need a high-end set of uh, screwdrivers. You just gotta find the right one, right bit, and then kind of go with that. But um, it does appear that the screws are slightly different and the one so let's get this on on camera okay so this longer screw with the smaller threads actually came out of the top of the reel these two that are a little bit shorter but also have the finer threads came out of the back of the reel on the outer face and then this one with the larger threads came out of the bottom. So this tells me that this is most likely engaging some sort of composite material and then these are engaging some sort of metal. All right, so let's go ahead and open her up. All right. So here is the anti-reverse clutch sleeve, and I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. Inside of the side plate, this does not look like CI4 material to me. So I feel like this is just some sort of composite or polymer. Um, yeah, it does not look like there's any kind of, there's any fibers in there. I'm not 100% sure. Anyways, okay, so let's get to the point where we can get to exposing the worm shaft because that's kind of what this video is gonna be about. I've already showed you how to get to the handle knob bushings, but we're gonna go ahead. Uh, this reel has so much grease. So there's one of the clutch springs. And here's the second one. I'm gonna go ahead and put those there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take out the main gear assembly. So this main gear assembly, actually the drag clicker on it looks very, very similar to what's in the Aldebaran. This is so heavily over greased. If you own one of these reels, I would suggest opening it up, cleaning out some of this excess grease and then maybe just fishing it like that because there's so much extra grease on here that it's kind of crazy. Um, this does kind of look like micro module gears. That would be the sound of the dry clicker. And I'm just going to go ahead and set this down here. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and set this down here. All right, we've got a carbon tex drag washer underneath that. I'm going to pull this plate up. Go ahead and flip that over. It does not, it looks like the carbon tex is lightly greased. So that should help with the smooth drag. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take out the pinion and clutch and... I just don't wanna to touch all the grease. All right, so similar to the Aldebaran, when you take out this assembly, Basically, it is directional. So the pinion itself is not directional, as long as you have the the side that engages kind of the, uh, the spool pin on the side that goes in towards the reel. But this, this little bracket here is directional. It has a kind of a half circle, if you can see right here, that kind of uh, encompasses the pinion itself. And that needs to point towards the back end of the reel. So here's where you have your your clutch button, that half circle needs to engage these two pegs, right? One here and then one right there. And you need to have the half circle pointing backwards, just like so. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and take out the pinion again. Oops, just like that. And then after a little bit of cleanup because there's so much grease in here, 
So the main shaft is held in by two screws, one right here and then one right here, and both look to be Phillips. And I'm gonna go ahead and use, I'm gonna go ahead and see if my 2.5 millimeter size works, and it does. And these are torqued pretty well. So remember to go slow. Oh, these have a little bit of blue Loctite in them as well. So there's a first screw, and these should be the same. I don't anticipate them to be different. All right, and there is number two. So with that, the main shaft should pop out. <laughs> They've really over greased this reel to the ends of the earth and back. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that and not mess with trying to clean off any of that grease. Okay, so to get to the next part, we're gonna have to take off this front cover. And it looks like to do that, there's one screw here, and that looks to be all that there is. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this screw. I don't know if you guys can see, here is the, uh, the locking mechanism for the side plate, but right above that is your Phillips screw. So we're gonna go ahead and undo that. Alrighty. And then, the front piece should just pop out and yep, very, very easily comes right out. And so it looks like just to get a little bit more space in there, I may go ahead and remove this locking lever. And that should give me access to the C-clip right here. All right, so it looks like there is a small Phillips. So this is going to be a much smaller Phillips size. So we're going to size down accordingly. I'm going to see if a J000 screw works or screwdriver bit works. And it does. All right. So I'm going to put my finger over just in case there is a spring because I have a feeling that there is a spring with a little ball detent to kind of give you that uh, positive click. And there is quite a bit of, uh, let's see. You can take off the plate, the lever will fall out. And then there is a tiny, tiny ball right here. And most likely there's a spring underneath that. So I'm just gonna gently, I'm either just gonna let it fall out actually. Or if it wants to stay, that's fine with me but nope. All right, so there it is, very, very tiny. I'm just gonna show you really quickly what it looks like. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there is the ball side, and then there is the shaft side, which goes in towards the middle of the reel. And then hiding down in that uh, recess is a spring. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get that out. All right. And so here's that spring that resides in the little opening. And that one goes right here, right there. All right, so now we have pretty good access to this C-clip and we're gonna go ahead and take out the C-clip. And then once that C-clip comes out, we'll remove all of the washers that are underneath that. And then hopefully the worm shaft will push out this way. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and change my bit. This one, we're gonna go ahead and remove that C-clip pushing it away. Ooh. All right, so there it is, loose. Go ahead and take that off. Set that down. And then we'll go ahead and take off our washers. Let's count how many there are. Hopefully not too many. Three 
video down. It just looks like two washers and they look to be the same exact size. So I'm just going to go ahead and put those there. And now you can already see, well, there's a couple things that are happening. The support shaft is coming out. So that's fine. We can go ahead and remove it for this one. The indentation side or the, uh, the kind of smaller side will go towards in from this upper hole here. I don't know if you guys can see that right here. There's an upper hole right above where the worm shaft is. It goes in and then the line guide has corresponding holes for it. And then it will have another matching hole on the other side of the reel. But now the worm shaft can be kind of pulled away a little bit. And what you'll do is you will try to push that worm gear down while the worm shaft is kind of up away from the side of the reel. And, oh, there we go. We're able to get it down. And then once you've done that, there's a little tiny, another little pin that just simply can be taken out. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside there. You can then remove the worm gear. I'll set that aside. And then if you look, you can see that there is a white bushing right here. And this is the bushing that we need to get to. So let's see if we can't get this guy to pop out. There we go. And my guess is that this is going to be the same exact size as those other bearings or bushings, which is a 2.5 or a four by seven by 2.5. So we'll go ahead and zero out my calipers. Inner diameter is going to be a four. Outer is going to be a seven. And then thickness is going to be a two and a half. So there you have it four by seven by two and a half. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Now you know where to actually get to the bushings to upgrade this reel to at least a 10 plus one ball bearing reel. If you want to make it an 11 plus one, I suggest that you look into purchasing the Roro aftermarket spool for the Corrado BFS or SLX BFS or Scorpion BFS. Uh, if you guys watch the video all the way through, thank you so much. If you like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps the channel grow. And with that being said, thank you so much as always. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.